I preferred last week when I could say that I've never been so bullish on crypto as when this guy can have an affair with this lady. This week I'm not so sure. Starting to think some of these courtroom sketch artists lost money on FTX. Now it's a more somber time. You are asking how these tragic world events will affect the markets. And there are a few things I can say with certainty. If we just stay with FTX for one minute first, because I want to address two points. I see so many posts that if this hadn't happened, if Sam Bankman Fried and Caroline Ellison hadn't conspired to keep Bitcoin under 20k by secretly selling Bitcoin belonging to customers, then Bitcoin would have gone to 100k last year. Okay, but they did. If pigs could fly, that's the whole point. The whole point is that you can't predict the future like that because stuff happens along the way that you couldn't possibly have predicted. In the market, it's better to go out on the street and look up in the air instead and check if you can actually see flying pigs high in the air with their tails forward. Because fact was that the trend was down in 2022 and it was clear as day. I said some things in a video 2022 and now that FTX is high on the agenda again, I feel this message is worth repeating. CTO Larson already saved me 100k through commenting in here that he would not have his funds on FTX. I was at work and not following this fully, literally pulled out 90% of my funds immediately. That was this post on the 6th of November in the Discord. If we rely on our emotions, on our guts alone, it will consistently lead us wrong. We will fall for the manipulation of the larger players who pump bullish narratives on social media when they want to sell or FUD convincingly when they want to buy. That's why most retail traders lose money, while technical analysis and objective tools are a way to try to uncover what they do not what they say, because that can sometimes be visible in the chart. It's much harder to hide the real actions there than it is on Twitter. Uh, yeah, we don't really do any uh, technical analysis. <laughs> Use very little math. Um, being comfortable with risk is very important. <laughs> um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. You're better off trusting your own eyes, looking at the chart, what is actually happening in the market, than trusting the market propaganda that someone is feeding to social media and traditional media. Because propaganda works. The second point on FTX. Caroline Ellison of FTX admits that Sam bribed Chinese officials with 100 million dollars to unfreeze their assets, purposely tried to scam Saudi investors in the final days of FTX, intentionally tried to seek regulators on Binance to destroy his competition and his only launch time. Let me make this absolutely absolutely clear from a technical perspective. A centralized exchange like FTX does not use blockchain. When you deposit money to an exchange address, it doesn't sit there in your wallet on the blockchain that's specific to you. If it did, it would have been blatantly obvious that FTX had taken the money you deposited and used it somewhere else and lost it. But a centralized exchange like FTX, like Celsius, like BlockFi, like Monte Cox, like Genesis, like Voyager and so on, doesn't work like that. Instead, all the money sit bundled up on the blockchain and it has a centralized database like an SQL database which keeps track of who has what money, just like a bank. And if you have a bit of critical mind and we for a moment distance ourselves from the anger we might feel to these FTX individuals, how big difference is it really between on one side FTX taking customer deposits and doing bad speculation with them in the crypto market because not using technical analysis, stop losses and math, and on the other side Silicon Valley Bank 
taking customer funds and doing bad speculation with them on government bonds. Probably also because they didn't use stop losses. Or all the banks during the financial crisis. How many bankers went to jail after 2008? One, this guy Karim was the only banker in the United States who was sentenced to jail time for his role in the 2008 financial crisis. And for two years, I think. Instead, the banks get a government bailout. Oh, poor you, it was so difficult in the market. While we already have the solution, the blockchain is inherently completely transparent. Eric Forhees. Open source, non-custodial, permissionless finance is the antidote. You can't do stuff like FTX did or the banks did on the blockchain because every person in the world can verify if the money is still there or not. If we now move on to the tragic Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This isn't going to get resolved anytime soon. There are zero steps even taken in that general direction. The conflict as such goes back at least 3000 years. This is 3100 years ago. King David. In 538 before Christ or before Common Era, the Persian king invited the Jews of Babylon to return to Judah. Muslim occupied Jerusalem in the 7th century under the second caliph. In 1099 Jerusalem was captured by the Western Christian army of the First Crusade until it was recaptured by the Arab Muslims led by Saladin in 1187. Seven, he summoned the Jews and permitted them to settle in the city, Ottoman Turkish Sultan, and so on and so forth. And the present setup is sadly a guarantee for continued violence. I posted this article yesterday. I recommend to read it in full later. Violent rebellion is guaranteed. Guaranteed as sure as the sun rising. I'm not a foreign policy expert. I'm not a Jew. I'm not a Muslim. I don't fully understand the complexity of this issue. But there is a few things that I can almost guarantee will happen. One is propaganda. For example, anti-crypto politicians in the US will now use this event to try to crack down harder. And remember that facts are not a necessary element in propaganda. Screw the facts. You can just repeat the message enough times and people will still believe it. Ryan Selkis writes that Elizabeth Warren is brazenly using the tragedy in Israel to scapegoat crypto for its role in funding Hamas. Then he writes this. But Hamas stopped using crypto in April. Reuters in April. Hamas said on Thursday it would stop receiving fundraising via the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, citing an increase in hostile activity against donors. Because as I mentioned before, the blockchain is actually completely transparent. So if someone sits in the US and sends money to someone the US has deemed a terrorist group, not only will they work to freeze the accounts of the terrorist group, but they can go back and find the person who sent it and put him in jail also. It's like live streaming your crime on Facebook. So people stopped sending crypto to Hamas, but only after even the terrorists fell for the propaganda that Bitcoin is good for terrorist financing. It's not. It's the worst possible way to do criminal stuff because the trail will be there forever for the entire world to see. So in Ryan's post the quote continues. They may also have preferred to go back to old traditional methods or figured out something else. I'm not saying that criminals don't use crypto. Definitely they do. They also use internet, cell phones, 5G, personal computers, cars and every other piece of technology we've ever created. The solution isn't to ban all those technologies for everyone, is it? Tech that is highly useful also to the law-abiding people of the world. We have to both enable society to take advantage of new useful technologies and catch the criminals, whoever we decide the criminals are. Doing either or isn't enough. We have to do both. And there's never been a better tool to uncover financial crime or misconduct as the lawsuit about FTX is now about or terrorist financing than blockchain. But those are the facts. The propaganda will be crypto equals terrorist financing 
let's crack down on it. That attempt I can almost guarantee will happen now during the next few weeks. They will try to take advantage of this terrible human tragedy to try to move up their political and lobbyist positions. That can't be good for markets if they succeed. The second worry is if this horrible conflict somehow escalates and spreads outside the geography. If contained there it probably won't affect the markets, judging from history. If you look at the date when Russia invaded Ukraine, that was 24th of February 2022. That was here. There was a tiny tiny week, we can see it here, but from the open that was 7%. And as you can see the candle even closed higher on that day. And that was Russian tanks driving around Europe. Many people freaked out here in Sweden and started looking for where the bunkers were in their apartment buildings. Markets? Nothing. But this could be different. There are not so many violent Ukrainian extremists in the world, I guess. But there are many violent religious extremists of all types. If God forbid this spreads, frankly markets and money aren't my focus and my concern. It will be the human suffering. But of course if that happens and there's some kind of society and business affecting consequences like lockdowns or increased security measures, of course that could dump the markets like Covid did for example. I certainly hope it will not happen and that this escalation will just fade down soon. The problem is that prediction is very difficult especially if it's about the future. We can only prepare our scenarios and then react to what actually happens. Looking at the chart, because I do use technical analysis, Bitcoin remains in the same range. Nothing has changed. And the scenarios I look at are these. If we break out of the range on the upside with a trend up, that would be great, continuing towards the target of this bigger inverse head and shoulders. But if we instead break the 25k neckline on the downside, we have then created a head and shoulders top pattern instead, which if it confirms would give a target of 20k and even a 16 or 15 15k double bottom then definitely seems possible. Larson line has not turned up, meaning the last flip was blue, meaning down. Now some people will say, but Larson, this is useless. You're not telling me if the price is gonna go up or it's gonna go down. How can I make money? The answer is that you solve this with position size, not by trying to predict the next move in the market when you have absolutely no idea. That's how. My process isn't just the indicator. You need more than that. I want to finish off today's video with this. I've lived in 10 countries. I have friends who are Catholic, Protestants, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists and others. There are good people of all religions. And there are idiots of all religions. Crypto, which is global money on the internet, is truly inclusive and equal for all. It's one area where it truly doesn't matter what color of your skin is, what religion you have and if you live in New York City, in Stockholm or in a village in Africa. Only your brain matters. For the first time you meet on Uniswap at the same conditions. In fact, it's even more inclusive than the internet as such, because China has banned much of web too, like Facebook and Google and Instagram, much harder than they have banned Bitcoin. Only the mobile is of similar level of inclusiveness. You can call anyone in China on their 5G iPhone. My hope is that global technology will continue to reduce differences and will continue to be a force to bring the world together. Because suddenly where someone is from, what religion they have doesn't matter. We still meet on the same football field. We all play on equal terms. We can still be friends. As soon as we get the major development in the markets, I will update you. Switch on the bell if you haven't already and maybe watch another video. Thank you Tuck. CTO Larsen out. Hey do.